Hello YouTube. The next citation of Old Testament prophecy is uh, unique to Matthew. Uh, this is in chapter 4 verses 12 through 17. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is referring to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness has seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. So, um, I don't really see how uh, this is related to uh, Jesus deciding to, to move into that area. Um, there is an interesting textual difference uh, between the Masoretic text, um, which I just read a translation of, and the Septuagint um, in verse 2, you know, where uh, the, the New Revised Standard you know, reads as positive statements, uh, the Septuagint reads as declarations. Uh, this says, O you people who walk in darkness, see a great light. O you who live in the country and in the shadow of death, light will shine on you. So, um, shadow of death uh, appears to come from you know, the Septuagint, but uh, you know, rather than uh, declarations, um, also in Matthew, they're positive statements. And uh, what's also interesting about using this citation is uh, reading a few verses down in Isaiah 9. I'm going to read verses 4 through 7. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness, from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now, um, in particular, verse 6 has um, been made popular in some music. But, you know, looking at this context, it, it seems like what Isaiah is writing about um, is entirely contemporaneous. You know, I'm going to read uh, a few notes from my trusty uh, New Oxford Annotated Bible regarding uh, this passage, uh, particularly verses 1 through 2 and also uh, 6 and 7. Uh, this says uh, regarding chapter 9, verse 1, uh, Zebulun and Naphtali refer to the Assyrian annexation of Israelite tribal territories in Galilee following tiglath Pileser's defeat of northern Israel in 732 BCE. Uh, the Assyrian provinces of Dur, Dor, the way of the sea, Galazu, Gilead, the land beyond the Jordan, and Magidu, Megiddo, Galilee of the nations, 
areas just south and west of Zebulun and Naphtali were also carved out of Israel at this time. And uh, also an interesting note about verse 4. Uh, the day of Midian refers to Gideon's defeat of Midian and deliverance of Israel in Judges 7, 15 through 25. And, uh, you know, also regarding uh, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Uh, it has to say, um, the birth of a new king, perhaps Hezekiah, the son and successor of Ahaz, signals a new period of peace justice and righteousness in which Davidic rule will be reestablished in Israel. So um, this prophetic passage is regarding the deliverance of the Israelites from the Assyrians. And in that context, I don't see how this is related to um, Jesus' relocation uh, to that specific area.